Hi. This is Prios and I'm a professional gambler and today we will talk about high stakes, high swings, high risk and yeah, how to survive in this environment and what the right mindset is. At least I assume that this is a topic of this video. We will again look into content from Phil Garfond and yeah, then I will also give my insight to the topic. But let's jump right into it. And yeah, obviously thanks for, to Phil Garfond who made this original content and yeah if you're also into cryptocurrency and investing definitely consider to check out my other channel too finance with excel but now let's get into it without further ado what's the best way to desensitize yourself from higher stakes games and look at the chips as units not money it's a great question it's you've identified a really important aspect of playing poker at higher stakes. Um, funnily enough, you know, it, it's the kind of thing that gets better with practice. However, it can get worse over time, uh, which is what I experienced because I went from, you know, playing um, nosebleed stakes games online before I'd even spent any money in the real world. Um, and so part, part of this is being young, but part of it is, you know, not having spent any money and like all of my friends not playing massive stakes and not having a lot of money. I was never scared to to lose it all at the beginning because you know, it, it wasn't that long ago that I had no money and I was perfectly happy and all my friends with no money are perfectly happy and so like it, it it didn't and it wasn't impacting my quality of life yet. Like the fact that I had a lot of money at that point like the only difference this is like when I'm 21, 22, you know, the only difference in my life um besides poker to a few years prior is that like I would not think twice about ordering food at night? Uh, yeah, this was definitely the same for me too. I, I just came from studying, was searching for a job, and yeah. And in between job and studying, I was playing poker. I also started playing poker while studying, but not that much honestly but i still was able to build up a healthy role of like a few k or something and yeah after finishing my studies i really started off with poker and also um trying a job trying to get a job was not going that well so i was invited to some assessment centers and stuff but in the end nobody hired me and that's that's actually was lucky and at a very early point, after a few months, I also realized that I like it way more to play poker. And it's also way, way more profitable than uh, go and have these 9 to 5 job that. And this also was the different time than today. Nowadays, I think for most people, a 9 to 5 job will be the better choice. But back in the day, it was very easy. And poker theory wasn't involved that much and if you were smart and doing the right things trying to improve constantly this was like printing money or at least it was better than everything i could have done um being an employee an employee at least that's what i figure um otherwise my life was entirely the same so before you have kind of the before you cool thing about this is also that you have the freedom to do what you would want and the money was also coming in but i also was not doing anything with it it was just like a virtual high score that i tried to increase and increase and increase every day but it has had no real world meaning to me start spending real money i think it's kind of easy to be desensitized to it um and treat it as just kind of units in a game that you're trying to grow um then after, you know, uh, well, fast forward to now, and I have a house and a wife and a son and um, expenses in the real world, um, it actually takes in some ways more effort, even though I, I have played so much high stakes poker that I'm somewhat desensitized to it. But still, if I'm playing big enough and I'm not being responsible enough with my bankroll decisions to the point where I'm playing something that's going to have actual like an actual impact on 
um, you know, my net worth and potentially my quality of life or like the, the, an impact on what I can do in the next year or two, um, it can get kind of scary. And I think the, I think that's an issue in itself already. Um, if you are taking shots and playing in games, you are not rolled or you have to put very strict limits on your spending. And if you lose too much, you have to quit immediately. And yeah, a good way around this would be to get stakers who take percentages of your action. And then it would be like playing your normal game. Let's say you play no limit 25, 50 normally, but you can get into a game that is like 10 times higher. Then you ideally have friends that take 90% of the action. So sell a piece to nine other people who have 10% each, for example, and then you can very comfortably play in this game and not be scared that you lose all your money. And yeah, that's a very good way around that. One, one way to, to work on it is... I mean, you could also take some extra risk. If it's a very good game, you might want to take 20% instead of 10%. But yeah, if your role is not good enough and bankroll management suggests that you shouldn't play in it, then you shouldn't take 100% of the action, obviously. Or quit very early, like after losing one or two buy-ins. I mean, this could boost your bankroll a ton, but if you are not able to quit in time when you still have money left and can rebuild, then your career is finished or when you have to start on very, very low stakes, it would take so much time and effort and you might not be able to come back. So the money is the thing you need to work with. And if it's gone, you're fucked. So don't let this happen to you and quit in time when you take these very high stakes, high risk shots. To um, just, just have experience and practice it. Another way is when you find yourself in spots that feel scary, stopping before you make the kind of uh, instinctive or intuitive play, which might be driven by emotion and say, okay, am I feeling that I shouldn't bet here because I'm scared or because I don't think it's the right play? And then you decide, you know, hopefully you have that talk with yourself and you can figure out what you think the actual right play is. Um, the third way and, and the best way is actually to make sure that you're playing reasonable stakes compared to your bankroll. And um, I've talked about this in a previous video, but essentially, it can be tempting to play bigger if you think you can beat the game because then your hourly is higher and and you know from there you can earn this much and then move up again and 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 so on and so forth. But um, what ends up happening in reality is you know in the real world there's a lot of variance and um, also in the real world the higher you you play the tougher the competition. Yeah, it's also like you should never underestimate variance and even if you play against very very terrible players. It can go wrong or the wrong way a long time. I mean, the worst thing that ever happened to me, I, luckily this was only on, uh, what was it, PLO 1K, but I lost 50 buy-ins to a guy who was absolutely terrible. So 50,000, 50 stacks against a guy who probably would is expected to lose like 100 BB per 100 against me. So this was like the worst thing in terms of variance that ever happened to me. And yeah, it, it was just so sick. I mean, it was generally in the, in the beginning, he was getting lucky and lucky again and lucky again, and he built up a huge stack. And it was always the, the, the thing that I was, was able to accumulate again and then the stakes got more even when we both had like 5k and then we have had an all-in and these big all-ins I always was, was a huge favorite like 70 80 percent and I lost them all and then I had to start again with 1k against this huge stack and yeah in the end he quit after like two or three hours or something it was up massively I mean there was also another factor involved that made the swings even bigger because this guy was getting bored when I just had 1k so he was like okay let's flip and I was like okay let's flip and I, it was also in in my best interest I thought to flip a lot because I want to have a bigger stack and even bigger edge against this guy than deep stack 
because I expect myself to make better decisions than he did. And yeah, I also was trying to get these huge stack he had of like 30k or whatever back and I can't do it with only 1k or at least it takes a lot of time and effort. And yeah, so the flipping was also in my best interest. But yeah, essentially everything got downhill and I ran very, very terrible against, against the guy. By the way, next day he came back, lost like 30k or something to me in an hour, and then he quit. But he still was up 20 <laughs> overall. It really is. And um, especially if it's getting into a point where you're a little bit uncomfortable, the worse you're going to play. And not only um, are you going to play worse uh, on your A game and your B game, but your C game and your D game are going to be much, much worse. And you're going to be hitting those more often because you're going to have a bad session. And it's going to really impact you emotionally. Um, and it's going to be harder to, to play at your best. And so what ends up happening is, yeah, in theory, in a perfect world, you have... And that's why you want to have stakers that you don't get into this spot in the first place. And yeah, if you get to the point he is mentioning, you probably should have quit way earlier already. Because yeah, then you might not even have an edge anymore and probably you risk way too much. Have more expected value in that higher game, but in practice, yeah, you're playing worse and then you go on a downswing, you're miserable rather than just like, you know, kind of annoyed um, if you're going on a downswing at lower stakes and then potentially you play a lot worse or potentially you take a lot of time off because you can't handle it emotionally. Um, and now you're missing out on some of that like expected value that in your theoretically perfect world you were getting. Um, so really the, the best thing to do is, is to move down. If you're feeling yourself uh, be really uncomfortable at those stakes, um, it probably means you're playing with too high a percentage of your bankroll. And the, the right percentage of your bankroll to play with is different for everybody because it depends on your life goals. It depends on your expenses. It depends on what games are available to you and your win rate in each of those games. And yeah, true. Very good points he's making. And then it depends on how emotionally fragile you get at certain stakes. And some people can handle, um, well, some people to their detriment can handle a ton of risk. Um, but some people can handle like what you would call an appropriate amount of risk if you were to do like a bunch of math. Like, yeah, I already talked about this earlier. This is actually a concept from investing. It's called margin of safety. So, yeah, always if you play somewhat, if you think that you are probably ahead, but results are very bad, then apply this concept with the margin of safety and don't play him anymore. Or if you play against someone where you think that you are only a little bit better, then probably quitting is the right thing because you could be wrong and lose to this guy and actually be slightly worse. You could be making a very bad judgment and actually be a lot worse than him. I mean, it could also be the other in the other direction, but how much quality of life are you getting if you win a bit against the rack compared to losing against this because it always feels way worse when you lose money compared to winning because every dollar you get extra is not increasing your um, well-being as much as money lost so i would say yeah don't get into tough sports or not down but you probably should not get in too many tough sports if you have better things around the corner that will be available to do you later. I mean, there are great games out there and there's just no reason to uh, battle against Rex or something. Like Kelly Craig. I mean, for, for me at least, it's about making money and not about the sport and getting the best. It's just about making the most money. And yeah, that's probably not when I play the second best guy or a guy that's only slightly worse than I am. Because that's costing my time and I also will have a small edge only. And I could play against a terrible guy instead. So keep that in mind. And, and, ...and figure out exactly like what you should be gambling with at a certain win rate. But um, others, you know, you can do all that math and figure out what you theoretically should be playing with, um, but it's still too high for you because 
it, you're just not like emotionally um, able to handle it well. And again, like it's not even just about having those bad days and then losing EV because you're playing badly or quitting. It's also about your quality of life throughout all of this. I mean, you're going to be playing poker. Presumably, if you're asking this, you're playing, you know, semi-professionally or, or something or professionally or maybe aspiring to be one of those. Um, so in, you're going to be playing a lot of poker. And if it's a really stressful experience for you and... Yeah, you want to keep the risk of ruin also very low and you pushing edges and playing way bigger than you should all the time. You probably will not make it. Or I mean, you can be lucky and get and race to the top very quickly, especially if you are also very skilled. But you could also be unlucky and lose it all and then have to rebuild on micro stacks. And it takes so much time and it's just not worth it. I think steady eddy is a better way to go. <laughs> you know, a third of the time you're on a downswing that's really upsetting for you. Um, you're just... I also think um, the downswings and losing days should not be that upsetting to you. For me, it was never upsetting when I lost money, um, especially if I was playing well. But it was insanely upsetting and making me angry if I lost money and it was because I was playing bad. That's the thing that you definitely need to avoid going to be an unhappy person you know a third of the time or more um and that's gonna you know have a, an impact on a lot more than your bottom line and your bankroll is going to impact everybody around you and it's going to impact you know you probably will also have way less downswings and the line will go like straight up or more upwards and not you will not have this crazy zigzags then um playing softer games because your win rate will just be higher and your downswings will be that detrimental. You. So ask yourself what's actually important. Why are you actually playing in the first place? Um, and I think you'll find that, that if you're playing in a way that you're not enjoying and it's actually making you unhappy, um, you're, not, you're not working towards your goals properly. Yeah. Um, I also want to make some final remarks like fill this in the end at the end now um i think if you are a recreational player or a fun player and you are not plus ev in high stakes you should not play unless the money doesn't matter to you i mean for example if you are a billionaire you probably don't care if you lose a million but if the money matters to you and you are not plus EV in the game, you should not play there in the first place. For me, it's just about making money. And you should find lineups where you are plus EV in. And if you can't find any, then you should not play poker. Or if you want to do it to have fun, it's no reason to play on high stakes. Why not play for less money? I mean, do you need the thrill, the kick? I mean, that's just insane. And Think about what you could have done with the money, money otherwise, and then you probably will also come to the conclusion that it's degenerate to play for huge amounts of money when it's minus a V, and you could have supposedly the same fun if you play like a lot smaller than that. I mean, that's always my approach, but yeah, I think some people are just addicted, but yeah, when you should, you have way bigger problems and yeah she should get that um fixed and i also think why people can handle high stakes and these huge amounts and losing a car or something in a pot or even a house is because they will um get there at least this was for me the case uh, by incrementally increasing the stakes or at least like like only doubling them doubling them again and stuff. Uh, I have to go to the door, so stay with me for a short moment. We'll be back in a second. Okay, sorry for that. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah, I was saying you will get used to the mounts you're playing for. I mean, I started at like 
one cent, two cent. And once I had a good enough bankroll, I moved up to two cent, four cent. And afterwards I moved up to five cent, 10 cent, and so on and so forth. And yeah, so you get used to the amounts you play. It's not that you go from two cent, five cent to 50, 100 or something. So yeah, that's how you can make it and that the money is not mattering to you that much because over time you get used to the bigger and bigger and bigger amounts. And you also need to not think about money in a way like I could have bought a house or a car or whatever really expensive item from the money I just lost. You have to just, it just has to be a number and a high score which you're trying to increase and increase and increase. And this is also the same when I invest money or if I play poker or if I play in the casino. I always um, use a concept that's very important and everyone should understand and that's expected value. So I, I don't think about this is a house which I'm risking or this is a car I'm risking. This is, I think, okay, I'm risking Mount X and this should have this should increase the amount by whatever 10 percent but i i know about the risk but i could also lose it completely but i i'm willing to take that risk because on average i should make 10 percent doing this investment and yeah obviously when you are able to find enough spots be it in poker, investing, um, entrepreneurship or whatever, where you find good spots, which are plus EV, so have a positive expectation, then you will make a lot of money. But when you risk everything in a spot where the EV might be great, but the risk of ruin is also given, then you there's a risk you don't want to take. So yeah, sell action if you play poker and these good games and great spots are there but you don't have the bankroll or stay away from it. You will be at this point eventually, but don't rush it. Yeah. Okay, I think that's, that's it. I think this was way more structured and better done than last time. Um, yeah, if you got something out of it, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, share. Yeah, I mean, other people might also get something out of this. So, yeah, share it with a friend, which also might benefit from the content. And yeah, definitely check out my other channel too. Yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time, good luck at the tables. Bye-bye.